Welcome to Thought for the Day on Wednesday the 29th of April. Today we're looking at Psalm 50. This is thought to be a psalm which was part of the public worship of Israel, perhaps as part of a ceremony for the renewal of the covenant. A lot of the language used in Psalm 50 is very reminiscent of the prophet Amos and the prophetic tradition, as we shall see. But first we have a powerful description of the Lord God coming to judge Israel at the beginning of the psalm. The mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. The last time I did a thought for the day, I talked about being still, and that God was not in the tempest or the fire. But here, in contrast, the psalmist depicts God surrounded by fire and tempest, coming in majesty. In verse 5, the psalmist recalls for us that the covenant of God with the people of Israel was sealed by sacrifice. However, God reminds the people later on in the psalm that more than observance of sacrifice is needed to fulfil the covenant. In verse 9, God says, I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens. This language recalls that of the prophet Amos. In Amos chapter 5 verse 21, God says, You offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I will not accept them, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amos is making the point that doing righteousness is more true to the covenant values than making many sacrifices. In Psalm 50, the people are reminded that to God, sacrifices of animals are only one sign of the covenant and that keeping the covenant requires the people to do good and keep the law, which is just and righteous, as God is just and righteous. So in verse 14, God promises, sacrifice thank offerings to God, fulfil your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honour me. In verse 23, at the end of the psalm, God repeats, those who sacrifice thank offerings honour me and to the blameless I will show my salvation. For both Amos and the psalmist, the attitude and the deeds of the worshipper are more important than showy gestures. To remember the covenant between God and the people, it is important to take the law to heart. God even says, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? And he asks this of wicked people in verse 30, verse 16. During his earthly ministry, Jesus was often at odds with the religious figures of the day. They were following a tradition which had taken to heart the prophecies of Amos and others and had attributed the fall of Israel with its destruction of the temple and the exile of the people to God's judgment for not having kept the law. So people like the Pharisees were doing all they could to keep the law absolutely However, Jesus criticised them for obeying the letter of the law, but not the spirit, for becoming proud in their attitudes and judgmental to those around them. Jesus, in contrast, as God with us, Emmanuel, modelled how God's law is one of love for God and love for neighbour. This was always in the law. It was not something new that Jesus had invented, but the way to live the law 
and the reconciliation of God and his people who were unable by themselves to live the law was what Jesus came to show us by his life and by his actions. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews describes to the early church in chapter 8 how Jesus is now the high priest who has offered himself as a sacrifice for us. And he quotes the prophet Jeremiah, who described a new covenant. As God says, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. For us today, I think the way in which we can respond to this psalm and to the new covenant which we have in Jesus is to continue to follow Jesus day by day by day. The prayer of Richard of Chichester comes to mind here. Three things have I asked of the Lord, to see him more clearly, love him more dearly and follow him more nearly day by day. For us, as for the people of Israel, God asks that we live according to his law, not just in what we say, but in what we do. We won't always get it right, but following Jesus as closely as we can in our hearts, becoming like Jesus and modelling ourselves on Jesus to our neighbours, friends and family will help us get through each day. And God promises that when things get tough, God will be with us to help us also get through each day. May God be with you and you feel his presence with you as you go through this day. Amen. <laughs>